everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be doing an embroidery project using the EM1010. However, this can absolutely be done on a single needle machine, so don't feel like you can't make it. You will need a five by seven hoop and this is what we're making. This is a super cute maker hand sanitizer holder. Now this holds the Bath and Body Works this size and this size. So both of these will fit in this hand sanitizer holder. And I made two different variations. Let me put these back together and I'll show you. So we've got, I made one with cork, super cute. And I used the cam snap fastener. You can um, use metal snaps if you want, but we're going to be using the the cam snaps. I just think they're cute. And I like the way they, I love the way this white one turned out. Super cute. I've got some different color variations. Here's one. This one, the R is actually in white. So I don't know if you can see that one as well. Um, here's the white with the darker letters in a little bit different order. And then here I used a little bit different set of colors, but these turned out so cute and so fun. Now, if you're a Patreon of mine, a $5 or more a month Patreon, you will be getting the embroidery files over in the Patreon group. You can find them there. And if not, use this as a jumping off board, a really, you, there's lots of hand sanitizer holders out there that you can put your own thing on the front. But this one I digitized myself and I use the Chroma software that comes free with any Rakoma embroidery machine. If you're interested in the Rakoma embroidery machine they do have a sale going on right now and I will put a link down in the description below the video if you click that link fill out the form or whatever put your name in they will get back to you and answer any questions that you have so without further ado let's get started and let's make some maker hand sanitizer holders so here's what you're going to need you're going to need your instructions these are included in the download file you're going to need a swivel lobster clasp if you want to hang it if you don't want to hang it you don't have to use it. You could also just use a key ring, whatever you want. I'm going to be using a swivel lobster clasp. You're going to need a cam snap system, and I will have all of this linked in the description below. You could also use a metal snap, whatever you want to use. I will be using the cam snaps in the video. You're also going to need your materials. You're going to need a piece of material, and I'm using marine vinyl for the front. You're going to need a piece of fabric for the back. It could be the same. I'm using felt and that's going to be the back side. And then you're going to need a piece for the pocket. Now the pocket one I have cut to roughly two and a half by three and my front and my back are cut to roughly six by three. So two pieces of fabric for the one for the front, one for the back, and then one for the pocket. Let's take a look at the instructions. So if you're using a multi-needle, you're going to need to stop between steps one and two. Step one is your placement. You're gonna put your stitch it, you're gonna put your fabric down, and then you're going to stitch the letters in step two, three, four, five, and six. You could stitch those all the same color if you want, or I'm making each letter a different color. After step six, you need to stop again and add your backing. Step seven is going to stitch both the front and the back together. Step eight is going to stitch the placement for the cam snap or the snap that you're using. Step nine is going to stitch a placement for your pocket. And then you're going to stop and you're going to add the pocket before step 10. So I'm going to walk you through this in the video, but I just wanted to show you. If you're using a single needle, obviously you're going to stop between each step automatically. But if you're using a multi-needle, you do need to stop between one and two, six and seven, and between nine and 10. And I will show you that over at the machine. I'm also going to be using a tearaway stabilizer and my seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter mighty hoop. You can do this on a five by seven hoop. This just happens to be the one I'm using. And I'm using the tearaway. So let's go over to the machine and I will get this set up and show you what's next. So here we are at the machine. We're just going to go through the regular steps to get our files. So we're going to click on, make sure the machine's unlocked. Click on file. We're going to navigate to where the file is. It's generally the last one. We're going to tell it to save it to the machine. We're going to go to the machine, find that file, and it will be the last one. And there it is. And we're going to click OK. Now we're going to set our hoop. And I am actually using a mighty hoop, a seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter, but I'm just going to tell the machine that I'm using hoop C and click OK. 
So if you need to rotate it according to your hoop, go ahead and do that. That is up to you. Uh, then we're gonna hit escape. All right, so now we're gonna go through and choose our colors. Okay, so normally when I'm doing an in the hoop project, I will just put this button right here on automatic manual and that will make it stop after every single step. But you don't have to do that. If you have a multi-needle machine that can just keep stitching and changing colors, you can program what is called a frame out or a stop. So step number one is going to be my gray. That's color number four. But while I'm on step number one, I want it to stop after it stitches step number one. So I'm gonna click this frame out button so I see the F in box number one. So that means it's gonna stitch number one and then it's gonna stop and frame out. It's gonna pull the frame out. And then step number two is going to be my one, three. It's gonna be color number five. Step number three is going to be my yellow. Step number four is going to be my teal. Step number five is going to be my green. Step number six is going to be my blue. But then I need it to stop on step number six. So I'm gonna go back up to button number six and click that frame out. All right, and then these last one, two, three, four steps are all going to, I'm gonna stitch those in white. You can do whatever you want. So step number seven is going to be stitching the two pieces together. So again, I'm going to put that in white. Step number eight is going to be my snap placement. I'm going to put that in white. Step number nine is going to be my pocket placement. Again, I'm just going to put that in white. And then I need it to stop on step number nine. So six, seven, eight, nine. And then we want to frame out. So here's a close-up view. We've got a frame out on the first box, the sixth box, and the ninth box. You can see that by the F. So we're just going to click OK. OK, so we are good to go. We just need to square up our frame. So I am just eyeballing the, the center. I can tell by this mark and this mark where they meet. That's the center. So I'm going to put the machine on needle number one. And you can see I'm off a little bit, so I'm gonna hit escape, use my arrow keys and move the machine to a more of a center place. It doesn't have to be exact for this. All right, so we are pretty good. I'm gonna lock up the machine, hit okay. And we're gonna trace just to make sure that we are within the design area. That looks good. We can adjust our speed if we want. I'm just going to put it on 800. Could probably go faster, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, make sure everything's locked up and we're going to stitch, stitch number one. So you see how that pulled the frame out. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a really light gray stitched outline. You're going to take your marine vinyl. I sprayed this with a little bit of spray adhesive. You could also just tape it down, but you want to make sure that it is covering those stitch lines completely. And then I'm going to hit start and it's going to go ahead and stitch all of the letters without stopping. And so you see it just automatically framed out. So now after you've stitched all of your letters, you're gonna remove it from the machine. So we've, we removed it from the machine. You can go ahead and trim up if you have any tails and you're going to flip it over. Be very, very careful. And you can, again, trim off any tails. So now I'm going to take my backing piece and again you can use tape if you want or I'm using this temporary 505 adhesive spray and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray and put that right over that outline.
return it to the machine. When you're returning it to the machine, make sure that you reach underneath and feel that it's not pulling that fabric that we just put on there up. Just make sure everything stays flat and go ahead and hit start. And stitch stitch number eight stitch number nine and this may stitch on the stabilizer that's perfectly fine it's just a placement stitch to show you where to put that packet stitch number ten Again, it's going to frame out. I'm going to trim off a couple tails here just to get them out of my way. All right, remove it from the machine. So here it is. I've got it removed from the machine. Again, I'm just going to trim off any tails. Flip it over. So here it is. Got it. And those last two stitches, were, there's one right there. Hopefully you can see that and one right there. That's my pocket placement. So all I want to do is line up my pocket and with those, those two edges and make sure that the right there, entire bottom of the pouch is covered. So all I want to do is line up my pocket and then I'm going to tape this into place. Those two edges and make sure that the entire bottom of the pouch is covered. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape it place. right there. And right there so we've got that taped into place and again you want to make sure that the fabric on the bottom that we just taped into place stays in place we're putting the hoop back on and hit start So this is what it looks like once you have removed it from the hoop. So we're going to just trim it down and you want to trim as close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch away. And the less that you open and close your scissors, I find makes a little bit neater of a cut. And then again, I, then I just did it. So you want to try to make as smooth cuts as you can. And again, as close, as you like to get that you feel comfortable with, it helps to have a really sharp pair of scissors. You wanna make sure and keep those scissors straight. Don't turn them like this, because if you do, you'll cut that underside and possibly cut through your stitches. So keep them straight. Move your project, not your scissors. So let's just cut this out. Okay, so there we have it. You can again, you can go back and cut it. It's always better to cut a little wider and then go back and I'll probably go back and straighten that up a little bit. But for the sake of the video, we're just going to leave it like that. Now you want to take your rotating lobster clasp and slide that over the end. And I put it so the hook is facing the design. You're going to take your awe and you're going to poke a hole right in the center of that cam snap placement stitch. You're going to go right through the both pieces, both layers. You're going to take your cam snap, consists of a male and a female end. Oops, I've got two males there. There we go. Your cam snap consists of two tack pieces and a male and a female end. You're going to take one of your tack pieces and put it so the flat side of the tack is facing the same side as the design. And push that all the way through. Flip it over. 
Take either the male or the female, it doesn't matter which, and place that on top. I'm gonna use the Camp Snap pliers. I also have the table press, but it's really not necessary. Um, you're gonna put the flat side of the tack on the black side of the pliers and then squeeze. And you wanna give it a nice good squeeze because it's a lot of thickness. So there you have the first part of your snap. So then what I like to do is take your hand sanitizer and these fit both this size and the round. Go ahead and put that inside. And then take this snap and just kind of pull it down and push. And that will leave a little indentation. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. And that's where my next snap hole needs to go. So I'm just gonna poke a hole just through the pocket layer. So I'm not going all the way through just the pocket layer. I take my other tack and put it on the inside and poke it through that hole. It's like so. And then you're gonna take the other back place that on and with the pliers you can just reach right inside where if you use the table press it's a little bit harder to do this afterwards and squeeze and again give it a good squeeze and there you have it Super cute, really easy, and these are a lot of fun. I think this would be fun to put on your bag for a crop or something like that. So here's a closer look at the finished hand sanitizer holders. I do have everything linked in the description below, including the swivel lobster clasp, the cam snap holder, and the materials used. Again, you can make these with a single needle embroidery machine. Don't feel like you have to have a multi-needle to follow along on the embroidery videos. Patreon users, you can head over to Patreon and pick up the the uh, design files. If I don't have your particular format listed, please let me know and I will make sure that that gets added. Thanks so much for watching and as always, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.